Back here on Westmoreland on the gridiron, Sean Myers now joined by Lance Getze, the head coach of the Franklin Regional Panthers. His team riding high, certainly a 3-0 victory against Greater Latrobe to open 5A Big East play last Friday. And Lance, that had to be one of the more remarkable games we've ever seen. Just one score in the entire game, it came courtesy of a field goal. What was it like coaching in a, a low-scoring game where you kind of figured probably the first points would be the only points? Well, it was <laughs> it was typical, you know, Franklin Regional that drove games. I mean, as far as a close game, exciting game, coming down to the um, down to the wire. Um, never really uh, a low-scoring game like that. It was it was just different. It was, you just knew you had to play uh, ball control, field position. That was the thing, you know, that you felt as the game went on. Did you have any intuition prior to the game that it could be maybe not that low scoring, but that it would be a lower scoring game? Because you mentioned in previous years, it wasn't that long ago you were playing games in the 40s against Greater Latrobe. Yeah, I mean, no, I, I you know, I thought they, they scored points this year. We have scored some points this year. Um, so I, I didn't know which way the game would go. I just knew it would be close. How significant is it to open the conference with a win like that against the greater Latrobe team that many people thought could be potentially amongst the most talented in this entire conference? Well, I think in this conference, any win is a, is a big win. Um, it's going to come down to the wire. There's so many good teams in our conference. I think that um, picking up a win against a team, uh, the quality of Latrobe early on is huge. Um, but I think every game in our conference is huge because I think everybody has a chance to win it. Um, any week. So, you know, picking up that win, they had a lot of momentum coming into this game. Um, but, you know, picking that up early, you know, first conference game is always a, a step in the right direction. Well, you mentioned they had a lot of momentum. Alex Tash had been running wild. He went for over 250 yards and four touchdowns in the prior week against a pretty solid Norwin team. What was the, I guess, the biggest factors in slowing him down? Even though he did go over 100 yards, obviously he wasn't nearly as dominant and you kept him out of the end zone. Well, you know, they have a great one-two combo in that backfield um, with him and, and, and their quarterback. But I think it was just our guys playing gap sound defense, doing what they, you know, getting back to doing what we're supposed to be doing. Um, you know, having a game like we had against Upper St. Clair the week before um, really set us back to just really break down things, um, go over our assignments, get technically sound again, because, you know, we were out leveraged a lot against that team. And, and so we, you know, got to like really break down what we needed to correct uh, defensively, and our kids responded well. Um, you know, the biggest thing, too, was we had 10, 11 guys at the ball carrier every play. So playing team defense really helped. And that resulted in a few takeaways, of course. Jamie or Austin's fumble forced was probably the biggest player, certainly amongst them defensively. How important was that that you were able to, to play takeaway a few times when they threatened? Oh, that was just huge. It's, it's just if you noticed, uh, you know, him running back there and, um, he had five other guys running right beside him so that, you know, when he did strip it, there's other guys ready to fall on it. It was just that team defense that everybody run to the ball and, and, and Jay not giving up on it and, and making, you know, he came to the side and said, Coach, I just did what we practiced, you know, the strip drill. So um, that was huge. I think uh, Matt Moore's interception was huge for us. They were getting a little momentum with the drive, and then he, he jumped in front of a, a hitch on the outside and, and intercepted it. Um, and then, you know, we had a punt. We were driving, but we had a punt. Um, and then first play, we caused – Austin Kearns caused another fumble. So, you know, those those turnovers, you know, when you win a turnover battle in a close game, that's going to matter. I know that probably for the second consecutive game, it wasn't the offensive output that you wanted, although you did certainly enough to win this one. What were maybe some of the shortcomings on that, on that side, and what did you ultimately like uh, from your offense that allowed them to win this game? Well, I like the way that we um, played up front. That was probably our best game up front um, overall of uh, all five linemen. Plus, we had a couple tight ends in there blocking. Um, Kyle running the ball is always going to be helpful. Um, when you have a guy that's creating holes whenever there's not really a hole, um, rushing for 169 yards, that was big. Um, you know, and we just felt like um, you had to play, we had to play it safe a lot. You know, we didn't really take a lot of chances downfield. Um, and, and we were able to keep the ball on the ground. We wanted to control the ball and keep it out of their, their running backs, quarterbacks' hands as much as possible. So, um, you know, controlling the ball, um, controlling the line of scrimmage, and, and I really liked how our offense did that in between the 20s.
but it, it was we just got to learn to finish a little bit better once we get in that red zone. Coaches almost always talk about special teams, the significance of it, and they say it's you know one third of the game. It's easy to say that, but when it actually comes down to a special teams play, it kind of takes on a different meaning. So the fact that you have a kicker who has been there and already made some pretty pressure kicks like Joey Bain, how much of an advantage does that give you typically on Friday nights? Oh, uh, you know, it's a huge advantage with him putting the ball in the end zone every single time he's kicked off so far this year. Um, you know, having teams have to go 80 yards. Um, and then the field goals, uh, being able to count on them once you hit that 30 yard line and feel pretty confident that he ha- he's has a good chance to put it through the uprights. Um, that's that's always a great feeling. It, it, it allows you to open up your, your playbook because if you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about like if you don't pick up this first time, you can still get points. So you can stretch the field a little bit more. Um, you know, so that's always a big advantage to have someone like him. I know you spend so much time focusing on your football team and the next opponent that you probably don't have a lot of time to focus on Franklin Regional Boys soccer. But were you a little concerned when he was missing some time the previous day in that matchup Thursday night on the pitch? No, I didn't even know that happened. (laughs) Uh, He came down. He did tell me he was a little sore, um, you know, but uh, I said we push our kids to be tough, to fight through some pain, fight through some adversity. Uh, you could ask anybody that plays football at any level. Um, nobody plays at 100% when you play the game of football. So, um, you know, Joey's a really good soccer player for our soccer team. And, you know, I know that sometimes he gets banged up because he's one of the top players around. But, um, you know, it's just one of those football mentalities you got to push through. Yeah, and maybe to your point, uh, he did score in that soccer game on Thursday against Greta Latrobe as well uh, before missing some time late with injury. So you mentioned Upper St. Clair, and that was not a game that I'm sure you were very fond of because it was pretty shocking how lopsided the final score was. Was there anything that that you were able to take away from that game that might help your team going forward? Yeah, stop being um, getting pushed around. We got to match physicality. We got to be physical from play one. And I just think, you know, it's something that we learn from, something that all, all teams you could always use is that game where you could learn something from it. Um, Upper St. Clair is a really good football team. They have big and they're strong up front. Um, they are just very sound football team and do a lot of great things. So, um, you know, they're, they're definitely one of the top teams. And, and, and we, I think we were able to learn what it takes to be one of the top teams now. Um, I always say you have to play the best to be the best. So um, having that opportunity to play one of the best, um, hopefully that uh, catapults us moving forward. I know that Upper St. Clair was a team that got a lot of headlines last year because, you know, with the playoffs, what they were, there was a lot of good teams that did not get in. And there's been a change this year. It's a bigger bracket. There's also committees selecting the wild card. Obviously, you're a team that could be affected by something like that with how competitive the Big East is. So what was your reaction to the, you know, pretty much complete change to the playoff format in 5A this year? Well, I like it. I think that every year there's always 12 teams in 5A that are really good and can, and can beat for our championship. So expanding it to 12 teams is going to be a beneficial to to all the conferences. And I think, you know, it's just going to make things uh, a little bit more fair for those teams that like an upper St. Clair who, you know, definitely finishing eight and two um, deserve to be in those playoffs. But uh, I, I think I think it's a good thing for 5A. Well, another team that likely will be in contention for the playoffs and maybe even more than just making a playoff appearance is Gateway. And we know the Gators each and every year have a lot of talent and they usually have a lot of success. A slow start to their 2024, but it seems like maybe they've found kind of a different gear in recent weeks. What have you seen from them, especially over the last two weeks, both victories? Well, you got to remember who they played to start off the year. I mean, they they played some very, very tough teams on State College and North Allegheny. So when you go against teams like that, it's, it's going to be tough sledding. Um, and they competed. I mean, you watched the beginning of those games. I mean, they're right there, right in it. So uh, Gateway is a tough team for sure. We know that it's going to be a tough matchup. Um, and it's going to be an exciting game just like last year's was and the year before, um, just like how it is against the Trope. I, I think that I could say that every week whenever we're playing anybody in our conference. I know that they've had two different players get significant snaps at quarterback, and I think at least last week in part due to maybe some injury. So how do you prepare when there's two different guys who have played quite a bit at the most important position on offense? Well, I think that their offense is called the way it is. I think they both do um, run the same type of plays. It's just what you get out of each player. 
Um, you know, the one kid is just a little bit better on his feet and, and can scramble a little bit more. And the other one um, likes to sit in the pocket and, and he'll roll out, um, but he likes to look, keep his eyes downfield and throw the ball. So, you know, we just got to we, we're just got to prepare for what they like to do offensively. And and hopefully, you know, our guys could, you know, just come out the same way we came out against Latrobe and be sound, uh, gap sound and, and everybody did do their job and get 11 to that ball. What else will be key factors in ultimately knocking off Gateway this week? Uh, ball control, I think, maintaining the ball, make, keeping their offense off the off the field as much as possible, and not letting up big plays. I think we got to eliminate the big play, make them put drives together. Um, that's always something that they're looking to do. Um, and and because if you get to sustain a drive in high school, especially if we kick it down and get, make them to go eighty yards, that's a hard thing to do in high school football. Consistently. Lastly. Anyways. I, I know Greater Latrobe left the conference for a few years. Obviously, it's great to see them back in 5A in the Big East. This week, Gateway, everyone knows Penn Trafford's a big-time showdown. I would imagine there's a lot of schools that don't even have one or two good rivalry games every year, and your team seems like it's going to have three or four every single year for the foreseeable future. How significant is that for the players, for the fans, for everyone involved with the program? I think it's exciting um, for everybody because they're close. It's easy to travel to, um, and and just the excitement it brings. There's a rivalries. The kids know each other, um, so it's it's something that you know we're getting to build something because it's happening year after year playing the same teams, um, and just hopefully you know we can keep being competitive in, in all these games. Well, Lance, uh, hopefully you're able to stay competitive this week and beyond. We appreciate your time as always. I appreciate it. Thank you. That's Lance Getzey, the head coach of Franklin Regional. We'll take a quick break and continue with more here on Westmoreland on the Gridiron.